One of my lifelong dreams was to become a psychologist. And I started working on that dream by creating a club last year. The first year went pretty well. We brought in a lot of cool psychologists. We even wrote some interesting articles. But at the end of the year, I realized something. I realized that even though it was something that I put time into, it was something I wanted to do, I did not do it with a specific goal in mind. I wanted to do it, yes, but I did not do it with the goal of, let's say, become the biggest psychology club in Bucharest. And that led me to this inner debate about wanting to do something versus just doing something because I have the ability to do it. So that then led me to Google, of course, on which I asked surviving versus just doing something because I have the ability. And surprisingly, it gave me nothing. Then that led me to another question. How can we use psychology to succeed and how do successful people use it to their advantage? Then I found out about Albert Bandura's self-efficacy theory, and it tells us that self-efficacy is a person's capability to is a person's capability to use their own abilities to reach their desired goal. As soon as I found this out, I was hooked. It was everything I was looking for, and it made me realize that by understanding how we think, how we act, and how we feel, we can shape our career. Albert's theory states that to reach self-efficacy, we first have to follow four simple steps. The first step is mastery experiences, which is another fancy word for practice. It is said that practice makes perfect, and Albert wholeheartedly agrees with this. Because what is practice besides proving to yourself over and over again that you are capable of doing something through hard work and perseverance? By bringing in special guests, I was able to show myself that, okay, what I'm doing is possible. And while success can help you towards self-efficacy, Failure can undermine my self-esteem and make me start to doubt myself, make me, make me think if what I'm doing is okay. So it's important to be careful because it's very much a double-edged sword. The second step is vicarious experiences, which is another fancy word for social role models. Because social role models show us that people who are similar to us have managed to reach their desired goal, and it, makes, and it gives us the confidence needed to try. One of my biggest role models is my older brother. And since he's more ancient than I am, he has went through a lot of life experiences that I have been going through. And so through his success and through his life, I'm able to learn from him, and instead of starting from zero, I'm able to start off where he left off. And that's why role models make us more, inspire us and make us want to do something. The third one is social persuasion, which is another fancy word for feedback. But I have a question for you. What is more important, receiving feedback or perceiving feedback? Raise of hands for receiving feedback, please. Okay, now raise of hands for perceiving feedback. It is perceiving feedback, because what is the point of receiving feedback if all you do with that feedback is just deny it? Instead of reflecting on the feedback and perceiving it, you, say, uh, you deny it with a yes, but statement. Someone, let's say, comes up to me and says, Matei, I really like that speech. But after that, I immediately say, yes, but I stuttered a little bit, or something like that. It doesn't allow me to reflect on the feedback and realize, okay, I'm doing this well, or okay, I should work on this. The fourth and final step, which is one of the most important ones, is visualization. It helps us, by visualizing something, it helps us manifest it and bring it in our life. It helps us manifest it by using sentences like, if I'm going through a tough time, 
I'll be able to overcome it. Or even if this is challenging, it help, I, I will be able to do it. There is also another step, which is that how you feel emotionally and physiologically is very important. Because how you feel emotionally and physiologically can heavily influence how you perceive your abilities and it, and it significantly boosts your self, uh, self-efficacy if you feel okay and confident with who you are. If by, let's say, doing sports, I feel more confident about myself physically, I'm able to take that confidence and put it in another area. Last year, I went ice skating with some friends. I should mention that prior to that, I had no experience ice skating, and I was not that good at it, and I still am not that good at it. But through their encouragement, through their peer pressure, I managed to ice skate a little bit. Through practicing on that little penguin, through their feedback, through seeing other people as experienced as I am succeed, I was able to ice skate for a minute, which is not a lot, but for some of who I never ice skated, it's a lot. <laughs> so what this memory taught me is that self-efficacy becomes significantly easier when you have someone to share it with. I practiced this method with one of my closest friends. And we managed to reach our end goal not only much quicker, but the journey was more enjoyable and successful. We gave each other room to grow. We gave each other room to fail. We, we respected each other's choices. And we started seeing each other as role models. We started to feel inspired by one another. So, at the end of the day, what Albert Bandura's theory taught me and what I'm going to do this year for my club is that I'm going to be more open to the people around me. I'm going to be, I'm going to practice more. I'm going to pay close attention to the things around me. And I'm going to start feeling better. <laughs> so I have a question. So no, not question. No, yeah, I have a question for you all. What have you been wanting to try? What do you need to start your journey? This is your life, not a rehearsal. Through self-efficacy and the courage of being yourself, you can do anything you want to do. Thank you.